we do a bunch of random stuff spiritually, religiously, that has no bottom line positive effect on our walk with God. It can happen to anyone. This mindless, emotional, and spiritual wandering can separate us from God. I want you today to commit to talk with God out of intimacy with Him and not out of a rote religious experience. God actively longs for us to return to Him when we've been distant from Him. The very first word of this chapter in Hosea chapter 14, just look at verse 1, what's that first word there? Return. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Take with you words and return to the Lord. That word return is used 15 times in the book of Hosea. God apparently was communicating in this book, he really wants us to return to him. Can I ask you very bluntly and clearly, are you distant from God right now? And is he communicating to you via the Holy Spirit through the Bible that you need to return to him today? That's a question for you to answer with God, but I got to think out of a crowd of this size, somebody in here is struggling with distance from God. In Hosea's language, the word return is a word that came to mean to backtrack to where you left God until you're back where you belong. In the book of Jeremiah, the word return is used a hundred times. If you were to read Jeremiah in this coming week, uh, the book of Hosea continues the same loving appeal. The door is open from God's side that if we'll come back, he's going to receive us. Did you hear that? If we come back to God... He will receive us with open arms. I feel like somebody in here needs to hear that today. Just he's gonna come, he's he's gonna receive you. Some of you think you've messed up so many times that he's just not gonna receive you after a while. And I want you to know he will receive you with open open arms. That's why he's repeating in Hosea over and over return, return. Return, return 15 times. He kept telling Gomer, hey, the door is open. And as Hosea told his story, he came to realize God is just the same way. He wants us to return. This isn't a warning to those who are about to slip. This is for those who have already slipped. Hosea's original audience was the Old Testament Israel that had already faced disaster and calamity. Think about this. The nation was ruined. And at this time, the final invasion of a guy named Shalmanazar V, who was an awful conqueror, he had ruined northern Israel. And Hosea belied God to be saying, Israel, even though you're already broken and ruined, if you'll come back to me, I promise that we can start over again together. Why is it that we hesitate at such an invitation? We're living in such pain and missing the growth of spiritual reconciliation that God offers. We know we can come back, yet we hesitate. Here's what happens. When we distance ourselves from God, we feel like every step that we take away, it is harder to take another step to come back. And after a while, we feel like it becomes easier to step further away from God than it does to turn around and come back to God. And I want you to hear me today. God wants you to come back no matter how far you are from him. So we need to return. Secondly, ritual replaces reality. Ritual replaces reality. Find our direction back again. Our first step is to have a real live conversation with God. If you're really far from God right now and you're struggling with wondering, can I return to him? Here's your first step of what you need to do. Talk with him. Pray. Read the scriptures and allow him to talk to you. 
you're wondering, okay, very practically, how do I take a step from super distant from God to intimacy with God? Don't try to make that leap all in one, one big step. Take a small step back. And the first step is prayer and reading the scriptures. Talk with him. The book of Hosea is the story of a people who had once belonged to God, but they allowed rituals to displace reality. They let the mechanics of a dead religion replace the meaning of a living faith. They, they lost direction because they mixed religion up with God. And earlier in his story, Hosea stated that when these people would go with their flocks and their herds to seek the Lord, they would not find him because he had withdrawn himself from them. And Christ quoted Hosea 6, verse 6, to the religious leaders of his day, and this is what Hosea 6, 6 that Jesus quoted. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Now, according to religious rituals, Hosea's people were following the scriptures. Just wrote following of the religious rituals of their day. They were bringing their animal sacrifices. They were, they were mumbling the right chants. Uh, they were singing or really whispering the right songs. They were doing all that stuff. However, uh, they were not people who had a personal communion with God. Can I ask you, do you know all the right songs and all the right verses and all the right answers in your Sunday school class, but you still lack a communion with God? then you can relate to the Israelites in the time of Hosea. It's easy to see how ritual can replace reality, even in little things. I'll give you an example of ritual replacing reality. The custom of shaking hands. Now, the reason I think of this is because this morning, if you and I have interacted, I have said to you, I'm not shaking your hand today. And I'm not trying to be rude. It's just I'm a little under the weather. I'm not like super sick or anything, but I'm a little under the weather. And if you're a little under the weather, I would rather you not extend your hand uh, to shake mine and vice versa. So uh, I'm doing elbows today, okay? Now, this past week when I wasn't sick, I was actually reading about this. So I find that rather prophetic. But anyway, uh, or maybe pathetic, but... Uh, <laughs> I was reading about the custom of shaking hands, which is a common action we take every day. And the custom of shaking hands, this is a fascinating little anecdote of your, of your morning. Uh, it goes back to ancient Babylon. And the king at his coronation would go up to a pagan statue, a pagan god, and extend the king, the new king would extend his hand to this the statue's hand of the pagan god to receive the power from that pagan god into the new king's life. Uh, that transfer of power to the king was a big deal. Of course, I'm sure many of you have heard about how in the Middle Ages, the shaking of hands was also used as knights would shake hands with other knights uh, to make sure they weren't bearing a weapon. And now it has become a ritual without any reality to it. You're not shaking hands with somebody else here in our church to get the power from them as some sort of a pagan god. You're not shaking their hand to check to see if they have any daggers stored up their sleeves, unless you're Dwight Schrute. But uh, for the most part, most of you are trying to figure out just how can I just have a customary interaction with another human being? It's a ritual without reality to it. Uh, have you ever wondered why visiting dignitaries are given the key to a city by its mayor? The ritual goes all the way back to the Middle Ages as well, when there were walls around every city. And as there were walls around every city, there were keys that would unlock the walls. And uh, it, it became a custom that when a dignitary would come, a dignitary in high favor with the city's leadership, they would give them a key to the city so they could come and go into the city as they would please. Now, we will give a key to the city uh, of Fayetteville, for example, and uh, to a dignitary that would come and visit our city, 
and we'll do that just because it's an empty ritual. It's ritual without reality. And little by little, if we're not careful, we can become just like ancient Israel in our religious life. We lose direction without noticing it. And we drift off into a bunch of aimless reality. We do a bunch of random stuff spiritually, religiously, that has no bottom line positive effect on our walk with God. It can happen to anyone. This mindless, emotional, and spiritual wandering can separate us from God and certainly from some heinous sin. I want you today to commit to talk with God out of intimacy with Him and not out of a rote religious experience. 